GTE Corporation, formerly General Telephone and Electric Corporation was the largest independent telephone company in the United States during the days of the Bell System. Originally founded in 1926 as Associated Telephone Utilities, it went bankrupt in 1933 during the Great Depression, and reorganized as General Telephone in 1934. In 1991, it acquired the third largest independent, Continental Telephone. They also owned Automatic Electric, a telephone equipment supplier similar in many ways to Western Electric, and Sylvania Lighting, the only non-communications-oriented company under GTE ownership. GTE provided local telephone service to a large number of areas of the U.S. through operating companies, much as American Telephone and Telegraph provided local telephone service through its 22 Bell operating companies. The company also acquired BBN Planet, one of the earliest Internet service providers, in 1997. That division became known as GTE Internetworking, and was later spun off into the independent company Genuity to satisfy Federal Communications Commission requirements regarding the GTE Bell Atlantic merger that created Verizon. GTE operated in Canada via large interests in subsidiary companies such as BCTEL and Quebec Tar Copyright La Copyright Phone. When foreign ownership restrictions on telecommunications companies were introduced, GTE's ownership was grandfathered. When BC Tel merged with TELUS, to create BCT TELUS, GTE's Canadian subsidiaries were merged into the new parent, making it the second largest telecommunications carrier in Canada. As such, GTE's successor, Verizon Communications, was the only foreign telecommunications company with a greater than 20% interest in a Canadian carrier until Verizon completely divested itself of its shares in 2004. In the Caribbean, Contel purchased several major stakes in the newly independent countries of the British West Indies. Prior to GTE's merger with Bell Atlantic, GTE also maintained an interactive television service joint venture called GTE Main Street as well as an interactive entertainment and video game publishing operation, GTE Interactive Media. History GTE's heritage can be traced to 1918, when three Wisconsin public utility accountants pooled $33,500 to purchase the Rickland Center Telephone Company, serving 1,466 telephones in the dairy belt of southern Wisconsin. In 1920, the three accountants formed a corporation, Commonwealth Telephone Company, with Odegaard as president, Pratt as vice president, and O'Connell as secretary. Rickland Center Telephone became part of Commonwealth Telephone, which quickly purchased telephone companies in three nearby communities. In 1922, Pratt resigned as vice president and was replaced by Clarence A. Brown, a former Bell System employee. By the mid-1920s, Commonwealth Telephone had extended beyond Wisconsin borders and purchased the Belvedere Telephone Company in Illinois. It also diversified into other utilities by acquiring two small Wisconsin electrical companies. Expansion was stepped up in 1926, when Odegaard secured an option to purchase Associated Telephone Company of Long Beach, California and proceeded to devise a plan for a holding company, to be named Associated Telephone Utilities Company. An aggressive acquisition program was quickly launched in eastern, midwestern, and western states, with the company using its own common stock to complete transactions. During its first six years, Associated Telephone Utilities acquired 340 telephone companies, which were consolidated into 45 companies operating more than 437,000 telephones in 25 states. By the time the stock market bottomed out in October 1929, Associated Telephone Utilities was operating about 500,000 telephones with revenues approaching $17 million. In January 1930, a new subsidiary, Associated Telephone Investment Company, was established. Designed to support its parents' acquisition program, the new company's primary business was buying company stock in order to bolster its market value. Within two years, the investment company had incurred major losses, and a $1 million loan had to be negotiated. Associated Telephone Investment was dissolved but not before its parents' financial plight had become irreversible, and in 1933, Associated Telephone Utilities went into receivership. 
equals General Telephone equals, the company was reorganized that same year and resurfaced in 1935 as General Telephone Corporation, operating 12 newly consolidated companies. John Wynne, a 26-year veteran of the Bell system, was named president. In 1936, General Telephone created a new subsidiary, General Telephone Directory Company, to publish directories for the parents' entire service area. Like other businesses, the telephone industry was under government restrictions during World War II, and General Telephone was called upon to increase services at military bases and war production factories. Following the war, General Telephone reactivated an acquisitions program that had been dormant for more than a decade and purchased 118,000 telephone lines between 1946 and 1950. In 1950, General Telephone purchased its first telephone equipment manufacturing subsidiary, Litch Electric Company, along with the related Litch Sales Corporation. General Telephone Euro unregistered trademark S holdings included 15 telephone companies across 20 states by 1951, when Donald Clinton Powell was named president of the company under chairman in longtime GT executive Morris F. Lacroix, replacing the retiring Harold Bozil. Power proceeded to expand the company through the 1950s principally through two acquisitions. In 1955, Theodore Gary and Company, the second largest independent telephone company, which had 600,000 telephone lines, was merged into the General Telephone, which had grown into the largest independent outside the Bell system. The merger gave the company 2.5 million lines. Theodore Gary's assets included telephone operations in the Dominican Republic, British Columbia, and the Philippines, as well as Automatic Electric, the second largest telephone equipment manufacturer in the U.S. It also had a subsidiary, named the General Telephone and Electric Corporation, formed in 1930 with the Transamerica Corporation and British investors to compete against ITT. In 1959, General Telephone and Sylvania Electric Products merged, and the parent's name was changed to General Telephone and Electric Corporation. The merger gave Sylvania, a leader in such industries as lighting, television and radio, and chemistry and metallurgy, the needed capital to expand. For General Telephone, the merger meant the added benefit of Sylvania's extensive research and development capabilities in the field of electronics. Power also orchestrated other acquisitions in the late 1950s, including Peninsula Telephone Company in Florida, with 300,000 lines, and Lenkert Electric Company, Incorporated, a leading producer of microwave and data transmission systems. In 1960, the subsidiary GT&E International Incorporated was formed to consolidate manufacturing and marketing activities of Sylvania, Automatic Electric, and Lenkert outside the United States. Power was named CEO and chairman in 1961, making way for Leslie H. Warner, formerly of Theodore Gary, to become president. During the next several years, the scope of GT&E's research, development, and marketing activities was broadened. In 1963, Sylvania began full-scale production of color television picture tubes, and within two years, it was supplying color tubes for 18 of the 23 domestic U.S. television manufacturers. About the same time, Automatic Electric began supplying electronic switching equipment for the U.S. Defense Department's global communications systems, and GT&E International began producing Earth-based stations for both foreign and domestic markets. GT&E's telephone subsidiaries, meanwhile, began acquiring community antenna television systems franchises in their operating areas. In 1964, Warner orchestrated a deal that merged Western Utilities Corporation, the nation's second-largest independent telephone company, with 635,000 telephones, into GT&D. The following year Sylvania introduced the revolutionary four-sided flash cube, enhancing its position as the world's largest flashbulb producer. Acquisitions in telephone service continued under Warner during the mid-1960s. Purchases included Quebec Telephone in Canada, Hawaiian Telephone Company, and Northern Ohio Telephone Company and added a total of 622,000 telephone lines to GT&D operations. By 1969, GT&D was serving 10 million telephones. 
In the late 1960s, GT&D joined in the search for a railroad car automatic car identification system. It designed the Kartrick optical system, which won over other manufacturer systems in field trials, but ultimately proved to need too much maintenance. In the late 1970s the system was abandoned. In March 1970, GT&D's New York City headquarters was bombed by a radical anti-war group in protest to the company's participation in defense work. In December of that year the GT&D board agreed to move the company's headquarters to Stamford, Connecticut. In 1971 GT&D undertook an identity change and became simply GTE, while Sylvania Electric Products became GTE Sylvania. The same year, Donald C. Power retired and Leslie H. Warner became chairman of the board. Theodore F. Brophy was brought in as president. After initially proposing to build separate satellite systems, GTE and its telecommunications rival, American Telephone and Telegraph, announced in 1974 joint venture plans for the construction and operation of seven Earth-based stations interconnected by two satellites. Also in 1974 Sylvania acquired name and distribution rights for Philco Television and Stereo Products. GTE International expanded its activities during the same period, acquiring television manufacturers in Canada and Israel and a telephone manufacturer in Germany. In 1976, newly elected chairman Theodore F. Brophy reorganized the company along five global product lines, communications, lighting, consumer electronics, precision materials, and electrical equipment. GTE International was phased out during the reorganization, and GTE Products Corporation was formed to encompass both domestic and foreign manufacturing and marketing operations. At the same time, GTE Communications Products was formed to oversee operations of Automatic Electric, Lenkard, Sylvania, and GTE Information Systems. In 1979, Another reorganization soon followed under new president Thomas A. van der Slice. GTE Products Group was eliminated as an organizational unit and GTE Electrical Products, consisting of lighting, precision materials, and electrical equipment, was formed. Van der Slice also revitalized the GT&E Telephone Operating Group in order to develop competitive strategies for anticipated regulatory changes in the telecommunications industry. In 1979, GTE purchased Elenet to establish a presence in the growing packet switching data communications business. GTE Telenet was later included in the U.S. telecom joint venture. Equals 1980s equals, GT&D sold its consumer electronics businesses, including the accompanying brand names of Philco and Sylvania to Philips in 1981. After watching revenues from television and radio operations decrease precipitously with the success of foreign manufacturers. Following AT&T's 1982 announcement that it would divest 22 telephone operating companies, GT&E made a number of reorganization moves. In 1982, the company adopted the name GTE Corporation and formed GTE MobileNet Incorporated to handle the company's entrance into the new cellular telephone business. In 1983 GTE sold its electrical equipment, brokerage information services, and cable television equipment businesses. That same year, Automatic Electric and Lenkert were combined as GTE Network Systems. GTE became the third largest long-distance telephone company in 1983 through the acquisition of Southern Pacific Communications Company. At the same time, Southern Pacific Satellite Company was acquired, and the two firms were renamed GTE Sprint Communications Corporation and GTE Spasenet Corporation, respectively. Through an agreement with the Department of Justice, GTE conceded to keep Sprint Communications separate from its other telephone companies and limit other GTE telephone subsidiaries in certain markets. In December 1983 Van der Slice resigned as President and Chief Operating Officer. In 1984, GTE formalized its decision to concentrate on three core businesses, telecommunications, lighting, and precision metals. That same year, the company's first satellite was launched, and GTE's cellular telephone service went into operation. GTE's earnings exceeded $1 billion for the first time. In 1986, 
GTE acquired Airphone Incorporated, a telephone service provider for commercial aircraft and railroads, and Rotaflex PLC, a United Kingdom-based manufacturer of lighting fixtures. Beginning in 1986, GTE spun off several operations to form joint ventures. In 1986 GTE Sprint and United Telecommunications Long Distance Subsidiary, U.S. Telecom, agreed to merge and form U.S. Sprint Communications Company, with each parent retaining a 50% interest in the new firm. That same year, GTE transferred its international transmission, overseas central office switching, and business systems operations to a joint venture with Siemens AG of Germany, which took 80% ownership of the new firm. The following year, GTE transferred its business systems operations in the United States to a new joint venture, Fujitsu GTE Business Systems, Inc., formed with Fujitsu Limited, which retained 80% ownership. In April 1988, after the retirement of Theodore F. Brophy, James L. Rocky Johnson was promoted from his position as President and Chief Operating Officer to CEO and Chairman of GTE. Under his leadership, GTE divested its Consumer Communications Products Unit as part of a telecommunications strategy to place increasing emphasis on the services sector. The following year GTE sold the majority of its interest in U.S. Sprint to United Telecommunications and its interest in Fujitsu GTE Business Systems to Fujitsu. In 1989, GTE and AT&T formed the joint venture company AG Communication Systems Corporation, designed to bring advanced digital technology to GTE switching systems. GTE retained 51% control over the joint venture, with AT&T pledging to take complete control of the new firm in 15 years. With an increasing emphasis on telecommunications, in 1989 GTE launched a program to become the first cellular provider offering nationwide service and introduced the nation's first rural service area, providing cellular service on the Hawaiian island of Kauai. The following year GTE acquired the Providence Journal Company's cellular properties in five southern states for $710 million and became the second largest cellular service provider in the United States. Equals 1990s equals in 1990, GTE reorganized its activities around three business groups, telecommunications products and services, telephone operations, and electrical products. That same year, GTE and Contel Corporation announced merger plans that would strengthen GTE's telecommunications and telephone sectors. Following action or review by more than 20 governmental bodies, in March 1991 the merger of GTE and Contel was approved. Over half of Contel's $6.6 .6 billion purchase price, $3.9 billion, was assumed debt. In April 1992, James L. Rocky Johnson retired after 43 years at GTE, remaining on the GTE Board of Directors as Chairman Emeritus. Charles Chuck Lee was named to succeed Johnson. Lee's first order of business was reduction of that obligation. He sold GTE's North American lighting business to a Siemens affiliate for over $1 billion, shaved off local exchange properties in Idaho, Tennessee, Utah, and West Virginia to generate another $1 billion, and divested its interest in Sprint in 1992. In 1994, he sold its GTE Spasenet satellite operations to General Electric in 1994 and sold Contel of Maine to Oxford Networks which placed the company into a newly created subsidiary, Oxford West Telephone. The Telecommunications Act of 1996 promised to encourage competition among local phone providers, long-distance services, and cable television companies. Many leading telecoms prepared for the new competitive realities by aligning themselves with entertainment and information providers. GTE, on the other hand, continued to focus on its core operations, seeking to make them as efficient as possible. Among other goals, GTE's plan sought to double revenues and slash costs by $1 billion per year by focusing on five key areas of operation, technological enhancement of wireline and wireless systems, expansion of data services, global expansion, and diversification into video services. GTE hoped to cross-sell its large base of wireline customers on wireless, 
Data and Video Services, launching TeelGo, a user-friendly service that combined cordless and cellular phone features. The company bought broadband spectrum cellular licenses in Atlanta, Seattle, Cincinnati and Denver, and formed a joint venture with SBC Communications to enhance its cellular capabilities in Texas. In 1995, the company undertook a 15-state test of video conferencing services, as well as a video dial tone experiment that proposed to offer cable television programming to 900,000 homes by 1997. GTE also formed a video programming and inter-services joint venture with Ameritech Corporation, Bell South Corporation, SBC, and the Walt Disney Company in the fall of 1995. Foreign efforts included affiliations with phone companies in Argentina, Mexico, Germany, Japan, Canada, the Dominican Republic, Venezuela and China. The early 1990s reorganization included a 37.5% workforce reduction, from 177,500 in 1991 to 111,000 by 1994. Lee's five-fold strategy had begun to bear fruit by the mid-1990s. While the communication conglomerate sales remained rather flat, at about $19.8 billion, from 1992 through 1994, its net income increased by 43.7%, from $1.74 billion to a record $2.5 billion, during the same period. Merger with Bell Atlantic Bell Atlantic merged with GTE on June 30, 2000, and named the new entity Verizon Communications. The GTE operating companies retained by Verizon are now collectively known as Verizon West Division of Verizon. The remaining smaller operating companies were sold off or transferred into the remaining ones. Additional properties were sold off within a few years after the merger to CenturyTel, Altel, and Hawaiian Telecom. On July 1, 2010, Verizon sold many former GTE properties to Frontier Communications. Operating companies, prior to the merger with Bell Atlantic, GTE owned the following operating companies in the U.S., Contel of Minnesota, Incorporated. Contel of the South, Incorporated. GTE Alaska Incorporated, GTE Arkansas Incorporated, GTE California Incorporated, GTE Florida Incorporated, GTE Hawaiian Telephone Company, Incorporated. GTE Midwest Incorporated, GTE North Incorporated, GTE Northwest Incorporated, GTE South Incorporated, GTE Southwest Incorporated, GTE West Coast Incorporated, following the merger with Bell Atlantic, some of these companies and or access lines have been sold off to other companies, such as Iltel, ATEAC, the Carlyle Group, CenturyTel, Citizens Frontier Communications, and Valor Telecom. References External links GTE.com, a Euro birthplace of T Euro unregistered trademark historical marker in Rickland Center. Wisconsin